Welcome to Obsidian for Tabletop RPGs. Let's learn how to use the tool. Alright, g'day guys and welcome tonight to a fresh new Obsidian.md tutorial series. If you've been hearing about Obsidian.md and wondering what it's all about and uh, you've seen people in the uh, forums and the community boards and the socials talking about this fantastic new free tool that can be used to manage your campaigns, then you are in the right spot. Tonight we're going to kick off a new series, a, uh, a step through how to use Obsidian as a brand new user and how to set it up and get the absolute most out of it that you can get to make running your games easier. If you are here and you don't know what a TTRPG is, then do not fear. TTRPG stands for Tabletop Role Playing Game. We're a whole bunch of nerds. We like to roll dice and tell stories and we use Obsidian.md to basically help manage all our information. But I have found that other users do get value from these videos as well, so feel free to stick around, you might learn something. So without further ado, let's jump in and have a look. So, what is Obsidian? Obsidian.md is a free note-taking tool, okay? Probably similar to OneNote. A lot of you have probably heard about OneNote at this stage. It's very popular. Uh, a lot of other software out there exists for taking notes, but Obsidian.md is relatively new on the market. The user base is absolutely skyrocketing. People are picking this thing up left, right, and center, and it's free. So why wouldn't you want to use it? Okay, now what really sticks Obsidian out from the other applications out there is just how easy it is to link notes together. And I'm going to show you some way through these videos, but you can actually just write. And as you write, it will be going, oh, you have written this name of this NPC. Would you like to link that together? And all you have to do is go, yes, I do, and off it goes, off it keeps happening. So you can do it with monsters, magic items, NPCs, anything. All right. So where do you go to get obsidian.md? Well, the question to that is obsidian.md. Just type that into your browser, and you're going to go to a website where there is a couple of buttons here to download it. As you can see, it does work on Mac OS, it does work on Linux, it does work on Windows, but it also works on your Apple and your Android devices as well. So yes, you can use this on your uh, phones, you can use these on your, um, your touchpads. Now, obviously you can scroll through this website, have a look, see what it is, uh, but basically out of the box is what we're going to show you tonight. All right, so let's jump in. I'm going to show you a quick preview of my vault and what I use it for, and then we'll jump into how we install it. All right, so just to wet your palette a little bit, this is obsidian.md, all right? And you can see here that this is my landing page. I have maps, I have maps with pins on them, I have mind maps, I have character sheets, I have D&D Beyond linked character sheets. I've got all sorts of things in here, and you can get this too. And the great news is, is you can do this all for free, okay? You do not need to spend any money to achieve this. The data is all yours. It's all locally stored on your PC or your device, wherever you decide to keep it. And it's up to you to manage your backups, which I find absolutely amazing. I personally cannot stand these online campaign management services that are charging a subscription fee to access your notes, right? I'm never going to trust my information to someone else's server and stick it behind a paywall. I want to have access to that at all the time because what happens if the internet drops out just as everyone's sitting down at your table, okay? If the internet drops out, you lose your notes, you're in a world of pain, okay? But with a tool like obsidian.md, it's actually all localized, all right? So as long as you've got a way to synchronize your notes to the device that you've got to use during your game, which might be the device that you're using right now, okay, you've got no problems. But how do we get to this point, okay? I use a lot of plugins. And there's a few of you who have been following me for a while and been like, yeah, yeah, he uses a lot of plugins. And I've got a lot of other videos. We can step you through how to install those. But this series is designed to step you through that process from the beginning. So to start off with, what you need to do is go to this website, click the Get Obsidian for whatever system it is that you use and complete the install, and then go ahead and open Obsidian. Now, the first time you open Obsidian, you're probably going to see something similar to this you're not gonna see this whole list of stuff over here on the left. That's just me playing around and testing. This is a list of all your active vaults. But over here, we have a couple of options for create new vault, open folder as vault, and open vault from Obsidian Sync. 
Now the first option you're probably going to use is create new vault. Create new vault is effectively, well let's just go through it, vault is effectively a folder on your computer that Obsidian knows to look at. And Obsidian is effectively just working with folders and files on your computer. So we're gonna create a place to put it. So let's go ahead and do that. Click the create button. All right, now what are we gonna call our vault? You can call it whatever you want. I'm gonna call mine TTRPG Campaign 6000 because why not? Then we get to pick a location. Well, let's tell it where we would like to put it. Now, I personally have all of my vaults in the same spot. So we can stick it in here. All right, um, yep, this should work. There we go, we've got the Obsidian. All right, we've now started here. We've got a fresh, brand spanking new Obsidian vault. Now, it's gonna click back down here, down the bottom left, to the open the vault button, just to see what's actually happened. We can see, see TTRPG, it's in the f.obsidian folder, and it's got its uh, um, TTRPG campaign 6000. All right, we can reveal, reveal the vault in the system explorer. So let's just go ahead and just do that just quickly to have a look. Here we can go, we can see it created a folder for TTRPG campaign 6000. And inside of this, there is a .obsidian file. Now you might not see the .obsidian file. The dot in front of it generally means that that's a hidden file or folder. But right now, what you need to understand that this folder here, this is what we call your vault. And this is where we're gonna store all of your notes. All right, so let's go back to Obsidian. We've got a brand new vault. What can we do with it? Okay, at the most simplest form, Obsidian is here to take notes and make folders. That's it. All right, so let's go over here to the File Folder Explorer, which is over this way on the left. And you can see up here, there's some buttons for a new note and a new folder. So let's start with a new note. This is new note. All right, I've entered a name for it. Now, I just wanna show you what exactly that did. So I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna open up my vault in the System Explorer and just show you that we now have a note. Now, if I open this note with Notepad, it's empty, but you can see there's a name there, okay? Now, let's just go through and do this again. And I just want to put a, this is my text into my note, okay? And if we now come here and we open up the new note, actually, we're gonna open this in Notepad just for simplicity. We can see here, this is my text is right there, all right? And that's all we've done is we've written effectively text into a notepad. And you're probably sitting in there self scratching at me at me going, why do I need that? There's nothing cool about that. I could make any note in, uh, in notepad. And you're absolutely right, you could. But also something to consider is just how powerful that becomes, right? Because yes, we are just creating notes, they are just text files, and you can open them in a notepad. And what that means is 10 years from now, if you need to get your data out, you certainly can because you can just open it in a notepad. All right, let's go a little bit further. We're gonna create another new note. We're gonna create new note two. Okay, so we now have new note one, new note two. All right, just to make sure you're following along. Yes, there's another file there. Yes, it's a, uh, a MD file. Uh, .md stands for markdown. All right, and what is markdown? Markdown is a, uh, a formatting option that's used in um, websites usually. Um, and other, other common tools, it's really, really quite easy to use. So Reddit, for example, uses Markdown. And the benefit of Markdown is it comes with all these predetermined sort of formatting options. So for example, if I would like to make a heading in my new note, I can say table of contents. All right, all I did was put a hash and then a space. All right, and then I wrote the name of my, my title. And that is now a title. Now, as you can see, I can put some text under that. Now, what I can do is put another title, okay? So already, I've got information that is grouping. It's got the ability to minimize and maximize it and lay my data out really easily. I didn't have to worry with any sort of like highlighting, fonts, colors, um, formatting, none of that, okay? I just said hash in front of it, that makes it a title. Now, a cool thing that you can do is we can say smaller title. Notice that I put two hashes there and it's smaller. 
if I put three hashes, okay, we get smaller and smaller. Now let's put some text under that. I'm going to copy this down here just for the sake of it. All right, now notice this one minimizes. See how the smaller titles all stacked in underneath the large ones. So it's got this sort of hierarchy thing going on inside of your notes. And look, for you guys who are playing your TTRPGs, you can probably already start to see some useful stuff in here, right? You can have your chapter headings as the uh, sort of the top level one hash. And then underneath that, you can have subheadings for sort of like, you know, subsections within that chapter and that content. And that way you can make it really easy for you to navigate your information. But what else can we do? The core feature of Obsidian is the ability to link from one note to another note, okay? And it's super simple to do. If I actually do a square bracket, square bracket, open, all right, see so yeah, it's typed to square bracket, square bracket, close on the other side, and start typing, it actually starts to recommend links for me. So I'm gonna link here, and I'm just gonna select it and press enter, new note two. All right, and we can see here that I now have a note to note two. If I come in here and uh, do new note two and say title, this is my text. I can go back here to my note, hover over, can I? There we go. And it basically gives me a preview that says, this is my text. Now that preview didn't out of the box just work for me then. So it's been a while since I've used a fresh install. So just note that I held control when I moused over it and that brought the actual, the preview up. So that's a configuration that you can change. So now we've got a note, we've got another note and we've got a link to those notes. So let's have a look at a really popular piece of uh, functionality that comes with this tool and that is graph view. So we'll come over here to the left and there's a little graph view button all right, if we press that, we can see new note one and new note two now has a link to it. I can drag these things around. What I'm going to do just to show you how this works is I'm going to grab this tab, drag it out and drag it into a docking stage. Now you can see here, there's lots of docking stages that you can go into. All right, I'm gonna drag it over here to the right. So I've got my graph here on the right. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create another new note. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna call it new note three. I'm going to grab that and actually bring it over here. So notice how easy it is to actually use this application, right? So it's very similar to like any sort of internet browser you've got in that, you know, it's tabular. You can just pick those tabs up. You can move them. You can move them into sections around the screen. All right, you can dock them. You can even dock them on the side here. As a TTRPG dungeon master, like that is super useful because you can start sort of bringing in your notes and laying them out however is useful to you. Very, very useful. But back to our example, we can see here, new note one, new note two, and what we can do is we can have a link to new note three. There we go, so we got a link from new note three. I've linked from new note three to new note three, so Silly mistake, we'll go to new note two, which should generate a link, there we go. All right, so as you can see, you create a note, it creates a link, and it's very, very easy for you to sort of visualize that link. Think about how this could be useful, guys. If you're coming here for a TTRPG, probably anything to be honest, just think about this, right? You have a note for your NPCs, you have a note for your magic items, you have a note for your locations, and as you type those things into your notes, Basically, it creates links between those things. That is incredibly useful. Now, let's say we do go ahead and make a bunch of NPCs. Where are we going to put them? We want to keep it structured. We want to keep it organized. We want to be able to find them really quickly. So what does Obsidian offer in that regards? All right, we come up here. We've got a new folder button. So let's press that. We're going to play the, call this the non-player characters. For any of the non-TTRPG viewers, that's what NPC stands for. It's a non-player character, something that the Dungeon Master controls. And inside of there, we're going to go a new note. I just right-clicked then, and we're going to call this guy Fred. All right. Fred is in my non-player character folder. All right. I'm going to create another one in there. We're going to call him Bob. All right. So now we have two NPCs. Now, let's say we have another folder from our locations. All right. In here, we have the in. All right, and in here we have the blacksmith. All right, Bob, 
works at the in. And Fred works at the blacksmith. All right. Now, already we're starting to see some connections. So Fred works in the blacksmith. Bob works at the inn. Uh, we might have a town. This one might be called... Um, oh, we, people know the, the, the world of Faron, right? Like that's one of the, uh, the core uh, areas. Um, inside there we might have Shadowdale, all right, which is one of the cities. All right, so inside here we can say... Shadowdale is an area within there. All right, look at how that quickly just worked. And then from here, we're in Ferron. We're going to go into Shadowdale. Shadowdale has an inn, and Shadowdale has a blacksmith. All right, and now if we go back to our graph view and have a look, all right, we can now see. We've got the continent, all right, that's linked to Shadowdale, all right. Um, I think I've done it from the wrong ones. I have. I should have done this from Shadowdale, all right, but it's very easy to fix. So now we have the continent, we have the city, we have the inn, and then we have the NPCs, right. It's creating that note structure for us um, just so we can visualize that. Now, some people will find GraphView to be amazingly useful. I personally don't use it. And just to show you why, um, I might have to wait a few seconds for this to load. Once you go a little bit overboard, GraphView does run rather slowly. So I personally don't find GraphView to be that useful. It's fun to look at. I love coming in here and seeing this sort of cancerous growth that is my world. Um, you can see all of the linked connections uh, together through all of the components of my world. Um, and of course, you can navigate around here using that as well. But, you know, it's not really that useful to me when I'm running the games. All right, so just something to consider. Outside of that, though, what else can we do? All right, well, I'm going to just quickly copy a picture. Let's say we have a picture we would like in our notes. Now, there are some tools out there where you have to host your images online, find the URL, and then link the URL into your notes. Or you can just come in here and use obsidian.md and you copy onto your clipboard and then you press paste. Okay, that's it. We now have a picture. But just to show you what that did when I pasted it, all right, this is my vault. And what we're starting to see is the images is in here. We've got the two folders that we created. Inside of there is the notes that we created. All right, so this is all a vault is. It's just folders and files. It's fantastic. Now, in Obsidian, we can do something fancy, which is called make an attachment folder. And this is super handy, right? So if you're gonna be like pasting images into your vault, you're gonna very quickly lose control of your structure. So I do recommend that everyone creates what I like to call the Z underscore attachments folder. Now, you don't have to put a Z underscore, but the reason why I'm doing that is just so that it actually sorts to the bottom of my list, all right? So your folder list will basically sort A to Z, so if you put a Z in it, it's going to go away to the bottom. Then you right click on that folder and we go set as attachment folder. All right, now if we come over here and I'll just grab another image, I'm going to do a copy and then I'm going to come in here and do a paste. All right, let's have a look. Where did that image go? It didn't come in here. Okay. It's now in my Z underscore attachments folder. So that's just a really simple tip, guys, for keeping your bulk structure nice and clean. Um, some people like to go further and have like subfolders inside of there, and then they organize things as they go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag that pasted image into that folder, and off we go, and we're good to, it's good to run. Now, here I've got an image, all right? Pasted image, it's not really a good thing. So something I like to do sometimes is actually just right click on it and go rename and we go red dice one. Uh, always update, do I want to update my link? So where, wherever my image is being referenced, would I like to update it? You know what, yep, always do that. Now I'm gonna just uh, do this one as well and I'm gonna rename this one to the Obsidian logo. Press enter, all right, and now that's going to be renamed and you can see in here that that's renamed that. 
And obviously, if we come in here and have a look at our Z attachments, you can see it's renamed those files as well. So as you can see, management of images is very, very easy. All right, so what else can we do? We're in here, we're making our notes. We've got headings, we've got links. That's all very well and true. You, for anyone who was picking up the fact that I made some uh, dot points, so uh, dot point one, all right, dot point two, dot point three. So all I'm doing there is I'm doing a dash, all right, and then typing my text and the markdown is automatically converting that to a dot point. All right, I don't need to do anything extra there, it just does it on its own. So that's a really simple way to do things. Now, so what can we do? Can we do bold? Can we do italics? All right, so bold, control B, yes we can. All right, just like working in Word, you can see it puts the, uh, the star star there. All right, so we're gonna do a bold test two. If I come here and do star star, and then go to the end and do star star, I can manually make things bold as well. Now italics, does that work? Yes, it does, that's one star. Now the one thing that doesn't work with, um, well, it doesn't work natively with markdown is underline, all right? You can't do an, an underline, all right? Um, you can get some uh, markdown, we'll go through that at a later point, or oh, sorry, some CSS you can get to, to turn on underlines. It is possible using some HTML code, um, but you know, just, Get it in your mind, you know, just don't use underlines, all right? You've got bold, you've got italics, you've got headings. Uh, headings are the primary way you should probably be sort of highlighting information. So I use headings as sort of like to organize my information and put it into elements and categories. And then I use bold to sort of highlight those things within, within an area. So uh, that works out quite well. Um, I just want to test this. I actually don't know if this will work. Yes, it will. I can also do highlights, okay? So an equal sign, equal sign, will then highlight that word and do an equal sign, equal sign at the other end so that you can uh, take that highlight out. And look, that is pretty much the nuts and bolts of how you're going to make a note. Um, for anyone playing along at home, there is another important one, uh, and that is tables. Um, tables are a bit harder in Markdown. Um, so much so that I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to show you how to do a table manually uh, because I don't do them manually myself. All right, we'll deal with that in a future plugin. Um, for anyone who wants to play with it right now, do a search for the advanced tables plugin, get that installed, it will make life a lot easier for you. All right, so we've got some basic notes, we've got some basic links, we can see the, um, the tabs that can be used to sort of move around and, and have a look at things. What else can we do out of the box? So let's go and have a look come down here to settings and what we're going to do is we're going to come in here to appearance and just to show you that it's possible we've got a base color scheme of dark and light oh wow look at that that is bright okay so um, this is uh, this is a markdown application with CSS on the, the, the top of it so what that effectively means is you can apply visual templates to your notes as well so in this case here I'm using the default out of the box theme but I'm using the light theme now and you can see it's completely changed the look and feel. If we come up here to settings though, and we go to appearance and we have a look at themes, all right, we can actually come in here to manage and have a look at this, right? This is all of the different themes that are available, all right? Made by the community. Um, the tool itself is not open source, but a lot of the plugins and appearance stuff that is available is open source made by the community. And just to show you how easy it is, let's go ahead and install and use the blue topaz theme. All right, we can see that's now changed the look and feel of the application. We've got sort of different fonts going on, uh, different sort of look for our folders, different colors going on. All right, um, you can see the different effects that this has had down here. So lots and lots of different sort of uh, looks and feels that you can get. Let's have a look at this one because this looks absolutely out of the box. This is so colorful. Let's have a look. Well, there we go. We're gonna to go to the dark one. I think that might work better. Yeah, there we go. All right, so hopefully you can see that it's very easily changed, right? You can customize the absolute buggery out of this thing, right? Like you just come in here, change the CSS. If you get bored, of the way your vault looks, you can come in here and just change it. It's that simple. Um, and you know, if you would like to have a D&D &D look, 
Um, there is some D&D &D stuff in here. I recommend you have a look for my uh, video on the ITS theme. Uh, but the ITS theme is the one that we generally use uh, in the TTRPG area. Well, I mean, I generally use, lots of other people use different ones as well. Um, but the, the ITS theme comes with some fantastic TTRPG stuff, and I will show you that in a future video because it's a little bit more complex than just pressing go. It's got a lot of custom stuff that's really cool that you can do as well. All right, so let's just go back. I'm going to uh, stop using the ITS theme. Uh, we're going to go to the default theme and just use this theme. All right, just to make sure everyone's on the same page. All right, and then what we're going to do is just come back here to settings and just have a look at some of the settings that I recommend first time users basically go through and change because these are the ones that we get a question on. Now, actually, I'm going to shut this down so you can see it. One of the common questions we get is why is my note not taking up the full screen? Right, it's only taking up the center, and what that is is readable line length. So we come down here to settings and go into editor. There's an option here for readable line length. You can turn that off, and that will then make sure that your text takes up the entire screen. Now, some people who read a lot might like readable line length. I personally find it to be obviously wasting a lot of screen space, and I like to be efficient with my screen space, so I like to turn that option off. Completely up to you. All right, you can do that as well. There is an option here for front matter. Now we're going to go into front matter in a separate video because it's a, it's an important topic that you need there as well. All right, so leave that for now. We'll come back to it. Fold heading. Do you want the ability to fold the heading or not? So if I turn that off, all right, uh, where was something that had, there we go. See that the folding is gone. All right, I can't minimize. So that is an option that you can turn on or off if you want. All right, it's 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 a it's, it's an option. Show line uh, show line number. All right, you can see the ones to tens through there on the side might be useful. A lot of the coders use that. Okay, so there's a lot of people that do use Obsidian for sort of like coding behavior. Um, one of the very common things we get questions on is does it have a spell check? The answer is yes. You can come in here, turn on your spell check, come in here and pick your um, your language that you would like to use. I'm obviously an Aussie, so I'll go and use the Australian dictionary, and then I'll come through and just basically cancel out the rest of that. Um, and to be honest, I don't think I really play with any of the other options. All right, now, something that I do like, though, is that in here we can see that we have a default view for new tabs. We have editing view or reading view. So when you open up a new tab, do you want it to go into edit mode or DR into reading mode? And what that is, See here, we've got this little icon up the top right where we're in editing mode and we can type. If we go into preview mode, we can't type. And it does what we call as rendering the, uh, the note. All right, but I personally don't like this concept here of um, what we call live preview. And it's probably best explained with our picture here. All right, we can see here that basically when I go into edit mode and click on my picture, it shows me this line of code and then the image. What's, what it's actually doing is in the note, and just to show you this actually, so you can get your head around it. If we go into our, what are we in? We're in location and shadow dale. We'll open that with notepad. All right, we can see the image is not actually in the note. Okay, we have our links, we have our dot points, we have our headings. But then we just have these here, and these are links to pictures. And what they're doing is they're saying, I want you to find the picture in my vault that's called reddice1.png, and I want you to display it. All right, so just know that the, uh, the image is not actually in the note. It's not like a Word document where the, the pictures are embedded inside of the file itself. Um, it's completely separate. But I don't like the fact that when I'm editing, editing my notes, I can see the text and the image. And you'll understand why when you start working with tables and more complex uh, things inside the tool. But personally, I like to turn this live preview off. So just so you guys know it's an option, there is source mode. And what source mode does is basically means that when I want to render or preview my picture, I can do so. But when I want to edit, I can edit and all I see is the text. And look, for me, this is an efficiency thing. There's people out there who would prefer to have it the other way where you're as you're typing, it's rendering and showing you what it's rendering. I personally prefer just to see the text. I find it a lot quicker and a lot more efficient. 
All right, so inside of here, there's a file and links. There's some, some more options that you can go through and play with. Uh, so default location for new uh, notes, you can create a new folder here if you like. Um, there's would you like to use wiki links? I do recommend that you leave that turned on. Um, here's an interesting option though, detect all file extensions. So just a note for our TTRPG community. If you were to go and drop all of your PDF files into your vault, then be aware that this tool can actually show you that. Uh, let me see if I can give you a quick example of that. All right, grabbed a adventure PDF. All right, as you can see, that's rendered inside already. All right, and let's just do a test here. Like, can we actually link to our PDFs? All right, yes, we can. And note that if I stick the explanation mark in front of it, I can also render that PDF inside of another note and I can link to it. All right, so once we've got the preview happening, once we've got the rendering happening, that's really useful. Now, just to take you back to the images, actually, I think that's a really good lesson for you guys to have was uh, just quickly how those pictures are showing. So just a heads up that this is how you obviously do a link, so square bracket, square bracket, linked to something, so red dice, for example. But note here that the explanation in the front is actually what makes it render. So right now, I don't have an explanation on the top one, so therefore it just displays me a link. I can hover and go to it, but if I put the explanation mark in the front of it, it will actually render it and display that image properly. All right, so there we go. So we've basically gone through, um, we've got an attachment folder set, we did that before. Uh, we've gone through the editor and the appearance. Uh, there's a whole section here on hotkeys. Uh, for anyone who knows what Vim is, you can also enable Vim in the editor mode, um, and you can use hotkeys for just about everything. Um, but there is also a super useful piece of functionality here, uh, which is uh, community plugins and core plugins. Now, community plugins is basically um, cool stuff that comes with the application out of the box. Okay, I will do a separate video on some of those just to show you what they mean. Some of them are quite extensive and there's a, a lot of different stuff in there. I do have a lot of videos on those things as well. So, you know, feel free to go through and have a look. But then there's community plugins as well. We are going to go deep down this rabbit hole, guys. Like, I won't do that in video, this video. Um, let's save that for the next video. But trust me when I say, this is the magic garden where you want to go and explore because this is the stuff that's going to turn obsidian.md from a simple note-taking tool into something that will actually blow your mind. All right, anyway, that is it, guys. That's all I want to show you. This is an introduction video to show you this is obsidian.md. Sorry, just note that I pulled a tab out there and you can create a new window with it. Yes, you can drag them onto your separate screen so that you can use two screens as well. But this is obsidian.md, right? It is a note-taking tool. It is a markdown powered tool, so it's very, very quick and easy to enter your text. Um, if you are nervous about learning markdown and this concept of, oh, gotta put a hash in front of something scares you, look, please just like, stop and just look at how simple this is, right? You want a heading, put a hash in front of it. You wanna make it bold, control B. You wanna make it italic, control I. Like it really is not too much more difficult than that. Yes, there are going to be things that we learn in future videos that have some more complex syntax, but I'm gonna show you ways to make that simple as well. Obsidian.md is a very easy to use application. All right, and that's what I love about it. You can pick it up, it's easy, you just, you, you start to learn it, you start to make your notes, and all of a sudden you've got these links happening everywhere, you've got a graph view that looks fantastic, and this thing just starts to come alive. But then you look underneath the surface and you go, oh, plugins. And you, th this is one of those tools that is easy to learn, almost impossible to master. I'll be completely honest. The uh, extent of configuration and change that you can go to with this tool will blow your mind, right? I can show you how to use AI for text generations and you can create AI image generations and you've got automatic linking and stat blocks and initiative trackers and maps with pins on them and the ability to measure on your maps, right? This tool will continue to blow your mind. And every time you think that you've just mastered something, the next week there'll be a new plugin comes out that you go, oh yes, that's exactly what I need. And I'm, I know exactly where I'm going to use that and off you want to learn how to use that. 
I personally enjoy that learning curve. I like learning new things. So this tool for me is a lot of fun. Hopefully you uh, get some enjoyment out of it as well. So for this video, if you're still watching, please do use this as an opportunity to go through and explore uh, this new tool. Enjoy it, all right? And then next video, we'll dive in a little bit deeper. So thanks for watching. If you do enjoy this, please do like and subscribe. I also have a Patreon uh, account where you can come and basically join uh, me in the community as we basically learn this tool together. You get full access to all my tutorials and my files and also a really amazing Discord community with lots and lots of uh, helpful people. So thank you for joining me. My name's Josh Plunkett and we are going to learn how to use Obsidian.md as a TTRPG campaign manager together. Good night.